you are alive. Jesus, you are alive. And we're so thankful. So we raise one more time. I will raise a hallelujah for everything you've done. I'll raise a hallelujah. I will raise a hallelujah. One more time. Oh, raise a
one more time because it's a night of worship. And I want, oh, it's resurrection day. It's resurrection day! He is the resurrection and the life. And I was just reading in Michael's, Michael Kuliano's little devotional book today. He's the resurrection and the life. He didn't just raise us back from the dead. He is the power to keep living. Not just to bring us back, but to make us live. And so I want to sing that with resurrection, life, power, prophecy inside. He's alive. What he gives cannot be taken away. And so tonight we're going to let it rise. If you need something to come back to life that's meant to live, then you sing it over that dead thing. Because it's resurrection day. Resurrection and the life. He's the resurrection and the life. For our raising and for our living. Oh, you're good, you're good, you're good. You make us want to live again. Oh, yes, you are good. You're good. You're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, 
your thoughts, your plans for me are good, and I know you hold my future in my heart. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Your promises. Forgotten a promise. He's never forgotten a promise. He's never forgotten a promise. Some of you need to believe that. Some of you need to hear that tonight. Even when I've forgotten, you've not forgotten. Even when I've forgotten.
lift your voices tonight. I want you to just to begin to break open the bottle. Just to begin to break open the bottle before the worthy one. Oh, break it open tonight. We're going to continue in a posture of worship, but if you want to, we're going to pick up worship in just a few minutes, but if you want to grab a seat right where you're at, go ahead and sit down just for a few minutes. We want to do a couple of things. We feel like the Lord wants to do something special right now, and we're going to go back into worship in just a few minutes. There are some empty chairs if you, if you prefer a chair. We won't keep you down on the ground too long. You know, we're Easter Sunday. And the last three days, we had a good Friday service on Friday night, and just exceptional. And then today, just been a wonderful day. I got some texts from some friends, um, pastor churches all over the country, and they see more salvation today than they've seen in the history of their churches. Just amazing stuff. 
One pastor friend of mine, pastor of the church in Atlanta, and said a family member came to the Lord today, one that they've been praying for for a long time. And I got all these texts and emojis and all that. You know, Good Friday and Easter are some of the most important days in our faith, most important days for humanity. And I shared something on Good Friday, and I shared something this morning, but I do want to share it again. And I think it's something that I, I just can't take my eyes off. And it's the whole idea, the veil was torn in two. The veil was torn in two. It's one of the most, I mean, the whole thing is awesome, but that phrase, the veil was torn in two from top to bottom. They tell us the veil is about one inch to four inches thick, about 30 feet tall, roughly about 60 feet wide. They said it was incredibly heavy that some scholars say it took hundreds of priests to be able to move it. I mean, it was incredibly heavy and thick. And it was the dividing line. It was the dividing line between God and humanity. It was the thing that separated. And the high priest would go in. In fact, they would tie a rope to the high priest. Because if, if he went in there and things didn't go well in there, God would strike him dead. Well, no one could go in and get him until they just pull him out with a rope. So we're talking about this is pretty intense. And so that little line in the middle of when Jesus said, it is finished. And the veil was torn from top to bottom. I love it because man was not able to tear it. They said horses could not even tear the veil. So let alone man could not tear the veil. And so God chose to tear, tear the veil. And from that moment on, everything changed. And that we could come before him as individuals in our messed up state, in our dirty state, in our sinful state, we can come before the Lord, and he's the one that brings grace and mercy. And then the other part that I think was maybe equally, if not more important, is God, if I can imagine a little bit, I was like, finally, I can get out of this little room. I now can touch humanity how I want to touch them. So this whole idea of the veil being torn in two is a big deal, and I feel the Lord wants to bring breakthrough to many people's lives tonight. You know, there are... Sometimes when you're, when you're fighting against something, you're trying to get free from something, and, and if it doesn't happen in a short amount of time, sometimes we build belief systems or thought processes just to justify an issue in our life. And sometimes we just try to minimize it. Well, I can't completely get rid of it, so I'm just going to minimize it to the smallest state I can put it and just, I'll just, just keep it there. In the Old Testament, there are numerous locations in the Old Testament where God gives instruction to the Israelites. He says, I want you to drive out the enemies from the land. I want you to abolish them completely. And you've got quite a, quite a big chunk of the Old Testament talks about God, like get rid of your enemies, abolish them. And what's fascinating and, and it's tragic at the same time, there are some cases, numerous cases, where they were not able to drive the enemy out for a variety of reasons. Sometimes the enemy was too strong and so they just kind of put up with them. Other times they just refused to. But regardless, whenever they did not drive out the enemy from their land, it created problems later. And one of the common problems it created is that the enemy's worship became their worship. What the enemy worship, what the enemy value became a value system for Israel. So their worship got diluted. And here's the thing. Our enemies were never meant to be managed. The stuff that we are... The stuff that we have in our lives that we're just just battling, however, whether it's fear, whether it's addictions, pornography, drugs, I mean, you, the list is endless. Sometimes if I can't, we think, if I can't get rid of it completely, I'll just manage it. And it's, it's all we know to do, but I, I have news for all of us is that our enemy was not meant to be managed, ever. Like God is the same in the Old Testament. It's a very different battle in the sense it's not about people, it's about a spirit world. And so the idea that like, well, I'll just manage fear. I'll just keep it on the lowest I can keep it and keep it there. God's like, no, no, I want all that fear gone. Or that addiction, like, well, I'll just, I'll just cut my addiction down to once a week. And God's like, no, 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 I want all of it gone. And I have news for us tonight that God actually is the God that because he tore the veil, he's coming after you. And he's the one that's going to abolish all the enemies in your life. 
I want Tom to come up for a moment. Tom got some great testimony. He just got back. He just got back from Toronto, and uh, he just shared with me this morning about, about some testimony that happened, and then I want him to lead us into what we're going to do next. Yeah, so good. Such a great word. Um, it's been on my heart to just preach the gospel everywhere I go. And uh, I um, was flying to Toronto last Thursday, and as I got on the plane, I was determined I'm going to preach the gospel on this plane. There's, I've just been gripped by this reality of just what Christ did on the cross. We owe the world an encounter with God. And so I, I got on the plane, and I'm sitting there, and I am scared to death, guys. <laughs> I do this everywhere, right? all over in public, but I've never done this on a plane, and I'm just like kind of freaked out in my own mind, you know? And so I felt my thoughts, I felt the Lord just kind of say to me, ask the stewardess if it's okay. So I, the, the attendants is walking by, and I said, hey, do you mind if I get up and make an announcement about the meaning of Easter? And he said, I can't tell you to do that or to not do that. I said, thank you very much. He walked away. So... I get up, I go to the bathroom, we're in the back of the plane, I get up, I go to the bathroom, I walk back, I turn around, I look at people, and I said, hey guys, my name's Tom Crandall, and I'm here to just say happy Easter, Jesus is alive, and I just show, I, I guess shared a short message about Easter, and I could feel it in the atmosphere, <laughs> one guy takes his earbuds out, looks at me and goes, you know? It was just good for my heart. It was just good to experience that and to keep going, you know? So, so I go for a few minutes longer, and then I go and I sit down, and I'm sitting there in my chair, and I'm sitting there just like, gosh, that was awful. That wasn't even, that, that message was terrible. I don't know. I, just, I did it. Oh, well, I did it. Anyways, a few minutes later, the stewardess goes walking by and said, excuse me, do you want to get, get up and make an, an announcement on the PA about hope? I said, yes, I do. So she goes, this world needs hope. I heard you want to make an announcement. Come on, let's go. I said, great. So I get out of my chair. She takes me to the back of the plane. And she says to me, I might get in trouble for this, but I don't care. This world needs hope. I know you have something to say. So she gets the PA system. Hold on. Hold on. She gets the PA system and she hands it to me. And I said, can I say anything? She said, yep, say anything. I said, how long do I have? And she said, we land in 10 minutes. Start landing in 10 minutes. I said, great, all I need to know. So I get on the mic. I'm like, Whoo. I'm looking at the back of everybody's heads on the plane. I'm like, this is awkward. Okay, Holy Spirit, let's go. So she pushed this button and I said, hello, fellow passengers. <laughs> My name is Tom Crandall. And I'm a pastor. And I just wanted to come to you guys and say that I love Easter. Easter's coming up. I love all the chocolate bunnies and stuff like that. But honestly, Easter is about Jesus Christ and, and God sending his own son to give himself on the cross in our place to set us free. And, and then I said, in light of the Notre Dame Cathedral burning, it's a picture of many times what happens in our lives, the destruction. Things come through and tear our lives apart. But the one thing that's still standing in the middle of it all is the cross of Jesus Christ. I said this. <laughs> and... And I said, oftentimes people are wondering, what does God look like? And I said, I'm telling you right now, God looks like Jesus Christ because he is God in the flesh. He didn't send his son to the world to condemn the world, but through him, the world might be saved. This is what Easter is all about. God bless you guys. Hung it up, I went back to my seat, and I was, you know, my chest is going. A few people clapped, you know, it was, I'm like, okay, cool. Sit down, you know, we... We're, we land, we get off the plane, and the flight stewardess says to me, that was amazing. So many people came by and said, thank you for that message. That was so encouraging. And one guy comes up to me after the whole deal, just visibly shaken, just thanking me for the gospel message that impacted his life. So I'm sitting there just like going, that was terrifying. But now I feel like I can do that again. So the next flight, we go jump on. The next flight... <clears throat> I walk onto the plane, and I said, hey guys, my name's Tom, I'm a pastor, and if you'd like, I would love to share an announcement about the meaning of Easter on this plane. And the guy says to me, you can do that on this plane anytime you'd like to. I said, I'll be back. So I walked to the back of the plane, got in my seat, 
A couple hours later, I get up. I'm like, now's the time. I walk up front. I said, hey, man. And he's like, hey, good to see you. And so use the restroom, come back. And I'm just sitting there building rapport with him, just talking, you know. And I said, so, you know, I want to honor you because that's big for me. I, I said, a core value of mine is to make sure I honor the people that, that empower me. So, like, I want to make sure, can I say things like Jesus is alive? And he goes, are you going to turn this into a sermon? And I said, well, I'm talking about Jesus and the meaning of Easter. So, I mean, I don't know what that is, but that's, that's what I'm talking about. And he's like, well, yeah, totally. He's like, so we talked back and forth for a little bit. And then um, I said, can I say things like Jesus is alive? Jesus is the healer? Because this is what Easter is about. He grabs the phone and he says, say whatever you want to. And gives me the mic again. So, you have not because you ask not, I guess. And so... Now I'm at the front of the plane, standing in front of first class. I already got to preach the gospel to 250 people on the last plane. Now I'm standing in front of 200 people on this plane. So I pick up the mic and I said, I said, hello, fellow passengers. My name is Tom Crandall. And uh, I, I just want to let you guys know I love you and care about this plane. And I want you to know right now, I'm here to just talk about the meaning of Easter. That Easter is about God sending his own son, Jesus, to come and die in our place on the cross to pay for our sin. And I said, you know, a, a picture of what life is like many times is like the Notre Dame Cathedral that just recently burned in light of those events, that many times sin and destruction or sometimes other people's decision rips through our lives and burns things down. But the one thing that still remains is the cross of Jesus Christ. It speaks and declares of the faithfulness of God that he never changes. He's always there. Christ is the healer. He is the savior and he is the redeemer of our lives. I could feel the presence of God hitting the plane. I could see different people just sit there lighting up. I could see other people just kind of doing this. And I just, as I just preached the gospel in my mind, at the same time I'm going, I can't believe I'm doing this, but this is happening. So I get done speaking and I, I put down the mic and now I have the attention of the whole plan as I'm walking back to my seat. And I'm like, God bless you guys. Does anybody need prayer? Does anybody need healing? And I just begin to just declare it out. <laughs> and I think, I think people were just as shocked as me that nobody responded. They were just kind of like, So I just started calling out words, hoping something would land. I said, does anybody have cancer? Christ is the healer. Does anybody have cancer? Does anybody need healing in your body? Is anybody in pain? God will heal you. Anybody? And nobody responded. And I was like, all right, cool. So I get back to my seat. And there was a guy sitting in front of me. And I could tell he had tears in his eyes. And I said, sir, what do you need? And he said, I need peace. And I leaned down and I says, listen, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. You invite him into your life. Christ will be the peace you need in the midst of the storm. So I got to talk to him a little bit more after I got off the plane. But it was, it was, it opened up my mind to the possibility of what's, what's actually possible if we take a little bit of risk. And I want to move into just talking about, I got to Toronto and I mean, it was just an unbelievable youth conference. Just seeing God pour out his spirit on a generation and seeing addiction set free. There was such an anointing for for freedom in the room that as i was preaching i just felt this boldness rise up on me and i said i said some of you kids in this room you brought drugs to this youth conference i want you to get out of your place right now and run down here and throw your drugs up front right now and as i was preaching we had syringes come up front we had a kid drop his pills up front and then a girl was sitting out there in the crowd who had marijuana. And the story that was told me was that she had, she had pot. And she, she, and she said to herself, man, I forgot I left it at the hotel. What do I want to go throw it up there. And she looked down and, and it appeared on her lap. I never heard of God transporting drugs for us, you know. So she comes up front, throws it up, down up front. And these kids get radically saved. This kid came up to me afterwards and he says, I am so free. Thank you so much. I dropped my pills up front. I feel so much better after coming into the light. Here's the bottom line. The gospel never changes. The same Jesus that set people free in the past will set you free tonight. First John chapter one, verse seven says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all sin. And we will have fellowship with one another or connection. That's the gospel. He will set you free tonight. If you're in this room, 
I know that there's people in this room, you're battling a marijuana addiction. You're battling pornography and intense masturbation. You're battling just heroin or different pills. Or you're battling, some of you guys, you're battling gossip. You're addicted to gossip. It's time to repent. God's calling us into a place of holiness, which is an absolute set-apart, joyful place of being completely His body, soul, and spirit. So if you're in this room right now and you say, you know what, man, that's me. I I need to get set free from from some kind of addiction. I know in a room like this or at church sometimes, the biggest thing we've got to through is the voice of shame. Because anytime you call out this kind of stuff, you're like, oh, God, not me. I'm going to be disqualified. And it's just like, no, can we just silence that voice for a second? Because Christ not only died for our sin, but he died to set us free from our shame. And there's not a person here in this room who didn't have to answer some, some kind of call like this at some point in their life. And nobody's judging you. In fact, they're not even thinking about you. They're only thinking about themselves. So, there. Got that established, right? So, if you're in this room right now and you say, you know what, man, I... I need to get free. And you want to step into the light, the family of God, where you can get covered, washed in the blood, connection with people so you can have power to walk out your freedom. Tonight is the night. There is an anointing here to break 25 years of addiction in this room. There's an anointing here to do it. It's time to drive out our enemies, as Eric was saying, and not let these things plague our lives, plague our kids, and plague our grandkids. It's time to stand for our legacies on what's been paid for tonight. Amen. So here's what I want to do tonight. It's going to require boldness. It's going to require courage. You know, some of you guys in here, you're so afraid. Your heart's pounding. And the bottom line is, I was afraid to step out, but I did it afraid. And as I did it afraid, I had courage to do it again the next time. I felt it. I didn't feel courage the first time. I felt fear. But the second time, I felt courage. Listen, so right now, if you're here right now and you say, man, that's me. I want to get free. Just raise your hand up right now. Bam, put it up. All right, sweet. Okay. Let's go. Here's what we're going to do. Come on. See, you got a family behind you. If you're at home and you're on iBethel TV or you're in your car, you're on YouTube, whatever it is, this is just as much for you. Right there, pull your car over and say, God, come and get me. I'm all yours. Surrender everything. Call a friend and get in the light. So here's what I want to do. Everybody stand. And you guys that have raised your hands, you know who you are. Here's what I want to do. All you guys that are right up front here, if you guys could all just begin to just push back, we're going to create room and space right here for everybody that raised their hand to respond. So if you raise your hand, I want you to just come forward right now. Just begin to move forward right here. And you're going to step into the light. You're going to step into freedom. You're going to step into grace. You're going to step into the blood that was shed on the cross that tore the veil in two, that tore that thing in two so that you would have no separation between you and God. Don't you remember? When you come to Jesus just as you are, Jesus touches the leper and the leper gets cleansed. Come on, somebody. It's time for freedom to ring in this place. Woo! Come on. Come on. Pastors, yeah, come on. Get them. Get them with the freedom of God. Yeah, we love you guys. Right here, everybody everybody up here right now, Just we're all going to pray this prayer together, all right? We're going to pray this prayer. Also, I feel like somebody here, you struggle with, like, lying. Just say, kick it in the face. I'm driving you out today. That's not a part of my destiny. I'm honest. Just get up here. If at any point during this time, you're just like, I need to be up there. Just get up here. Just get on, just get in on it. All right. Come on. Everybody pray with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, come just as I am. I surrender to you fully today, God. I invite the blood of Jesus to make me clean, to wash me from the inside out. I repent. I turn away from this addiction, and I turn towards your grace, your eyes of love. Thank you that you're not covering me in shame. You're covering me in the blood of Jesus. I receive mercy grace, love. Let the fire of God come right now and begin to touch every person. Fire of God. I declare chains broken in Jesus name. Chains broken. I declare right now minds cleansed in the name of Jesus. Chemical imbalances to be to be brought to wholeness in Jesus name. Come Holy Spirit. Baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. Let the presence of God well up on the inside and begin to make whole. Drive out these enemies. Yeah, come on. Yes, Lord. 
right now, I want you guys to do something like a prophetic act. Take that thing. We're going to do something called the great exchange, okay? Right now, close your mind. And I want you to just take that thing and just take it to the cross right now. Why the cross? Because the cross is where we died with Christ 2,000 years ago. You're laying at his feet. That's no longer who you are. You're not a pervert. You're not a drug addict. It's not who you are. You are a son of God. You've been resurrected with Christ in the newness of life. Right now, you got up with him out of the grave. This is who you are. Come, Holy Spirit. Touch. Everybody out there, put your hands right here and just begin to pray in the Spirit. Just pray in the Spirit. Come, Jesus. Come, Jesus. I thought there'd be a deep repentance, a deep repentance, a deep repentance of heart, deep heart, deep heart repentance. Some of us, many times, we repent enough to get forgiven, but not enough to change. Tonight's a different night. You're not going back. It's time to repent to the place to where the Holy Spirit's the only one who fills us, not, not any other in it, any thoughts just his presence so when the enemy comes back knocking he doesn't find you just cleaning in order he finds you clean and overflowing with the presence of God come Holy Spirit Woo. come on Freedom, freedom in Jesus' name, freedom in Jesus' name, freedom in Jesus' name. Freedom in Jesus' name. back into worship here in just a sec but i want to tell you just a quick story for for where we're going here years ago i had a dog my first dog i ever had and this dog was crazy she was a boxer she got she got her her chain hooked up around a rose bush and she was bound by this rose bush and her neck was stuck on the ground and she's just sitting there looking at me so i walked up to her her name was sydney and i grabbed the chain and i i unbound her from the rose bush i said okay go ahead and she didn't move she just sat there looking at me i said sydney you're free move and she didn't know she was free yet because she was so used to being bound she didn't know life any other way because she'd been bound for a little while there so i looked at her and i said go and she jumped and realized she's free and all of a sudden she took off running i'm telling you right now he whom the sun sets free is free indeed here's the deal what sin wants to do when you've been in it in the past it wants to tell you this is who you are it's an attack on your identity this is who you are you're never going to be free and it, it messes with your feelings your mind will and emotions but right now god has set you free you came to a, a heart of repentance whether you feel it or not right now it's you just made a choice to step into the light and the lord's declared freedom over your life so right now i want to declare over you second corinthians 5 17 says if any man be in christ he is a new creation old things have passed away behold all things become new you are new in christ this whole thing is no longer who you are amen and so now you're in process of letting your mind will and emotions catch up to what god just did in your life does that make sense so the best thing we could do right now is go back into worship and just 
and just look at the Father's eyes without that shame that you walked in here with, without that thing nagging at you, because that thing has been, you were crucified with Christ. You no longer live, now Christ lives inside of you. And the life you now live, you live by faith in the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. This is your life. Woo, you, you get the life he deserved. Come on. If you're in this room and you feel like you should have responded, Right now, just go ahead and raise your hand, and then, and then come on up here. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, get in on this. Come on, God bless you. God bless you. Come on up. Anybody else? Come on, man. Get up here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Come on. Come on. Let's go back into worship. We're going to just exalt the Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't look at your past. Don't look at where you came from. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the author and the perfecter of your faith. Amen? Come on.
spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ my living home. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from the
Cause any exchange with you is a good trade I'm wearing my garments of praise instead of my old rags Is any exchange with you is a good trade You can have it all Well, you can have it all <laughs> Well, you can have it all 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 You can have it all You can have it all Every last part Every last part You can have it all You can have it all You can have it all You can have it all
your heart, push past your temporary thinking, push past it. Come on, push past it, engage with him.